Today we're touring the winter greenhouse. I'm going through all our cultivars one by one and I'm sharing with you why we grow them and why we love them. So first of all, we've had, our last few nights have been really cold, like definitely we've had uh, temperatures below frost. And I haven't started to heat the greenhouse because what we're doing here is, you know, we're following different principles. They're all laid out in my book uh, about how to grow crops in the winter. Uh, but one of the first principles is that we want to harden them off. And so we grow them early enough so that they have time to really, you know, root and settle in. And once that's done, we want to harden them off to the cold temperatures that are kind of there now, but that are mostly coming in December, January, and February. So, you know, these crops have had frosts inside this greenhouse. And, you know, as you'll see, uh, if we tour and we go one by one, every year uh, I try a few new ones that I'm excited about, that I've heard about. And this year, the one that I tried didn't make the cut. You see, that's a cultivar called Huntensai. And this one, just, you know, the, the four or five nights that we've had below frost, uh, it didn't do well with them. I thought it would, and I, I kind of remembered in the past that this one was something that was working, but obviously it didn't work. So that's never gonna, you know, that's not gonna be in my, in my top 10 again. Uh, but otherwise we have, this one is really nice. This is a dandelion, and uh, what's really cool, I, you know, I don't know all the cultivars by heart in English, so I might reference my book here. So this one is, uh, it's, it's called Italico Red, and obviously we choose it because it has these stems that are really nice, like I'll show you. Like, man, these stems, they're fully bright and, you know, purplish red. And the way that the leaves pack out, it's really, right, really nice and really lovely. The, chef's, the chef uses it in different ways in the kitchen. He uses part of the, the stem, but he also uses the leaves to, to dress some plates. And obviously because it's the dandelion, it has that, that special taste. Oh. Now I would say that this is definitely more of a specialty crop, but you can also use it in lettuce mix just to add a few leaves when it's smaller. So, you know, it's definitely, we don't have like a hundred beds of these ones. We have just a few, but it's definitely one that's really interesting because of the color and the texture. It's very long, it's very nice. So like I said, this one didn't make the cut. Uh, Yu Choi, uh, you know, we choose it for the flowers, but this one is not frost hardy enough, so it's, it, didn't, it didn't make the cut. So Chrysanthem is another one that I'm trying for the first time. This one we had a few, uh, we had a few trials at the FQT farm uh, some years ago, but it's the first time that I'm growing it. And this one is really interesting because it's obviously super cold hardy. You see that it, it ke just keeps on growing. And same thing, we harvest some of the outer leaves. Uh, they're very interesting in their shape and their color. Um, and they have an interesting taste. So if you're catering to, you know, restaurants or just like places where, you know, the taste will impact, you know, the reason why you grow them, this one is interesting for that reason. Sucrine. Um, it's kind of inevitable to grow them, sucrine because they're so nice. I'd like for them to pack up more space, but having these super nice hearts, uh, they're, they're epic for salad mix. This one I think is winter density. You know, Johnny has a lot of uh, super nice, a, a really nice selection. And you know, Johnny's, to talk about them, they have trials every year on crops that are cold hardy. So they're definitely a reference. Uh, you, can, you can look them up. Uh, but mini gems, the only problem with those is that mildew starts to grow on them at one point. It, you see it's already started here and there's not much we can do about it except for the fact that we can harvest the outer leaves sooner and uh, you know the hearts will be will stay good. But when that starts to happen it's something to keep an eye on. 
This, another cultivar of dandelion. Again, very different from the other one. Again, these ones, they're very interesting because of the shape of their leaves and they're super well adapted for growing in the winter. So that is definitely, you know, if you harvest them just a bit smaller, they can be in the salad mix or, you know, some restaurants and some chefs or some people will like to have them just like that, like longer leaves. You can cut a few leaves every week and they just make great bouquets. They're, they're epic. Actually, dandelion is super cold hardy. It's one of these crops that people don't know. Uh, it's, it's one of these crops that not that many growers grow. So you can really, you know, make a mark for yourself with these ones. Uh, this one's really interesting. This is a pink Chinese celery. Um, you know, I had seen it in Europe in different places, different growers had grown it, but it's really interesting, the colors, and it's, it's slighter and more kind of slim than a, than a regular celery, but it, it has that pink color. And um, from what I'm observing, you know, the color is getting kind of milder. As, it's, as it keeps on growing. But this one is interesting. As you see, it's pretty, it's pretty resistant to frost. So it has, a, you know, a nice size already. So this one I'm looking forward to. And with taste, you know, I guess we're definitely growing this one for the color, but it's super, super mild. Like not too crunchy. Really, really interesting crop. So this one I'm excited about. <clears throat> Here we have the celeries that we grow also. Now this is, sorry about that, good stuff. This is a pretty classical cultivar. This is Kelvin. Um, this is one, is the one that we like because it's the most robust it's really like a workhorse it's it's really reliable so kelvin is the cultivar and celery is what's great about them is that you can actually kind of grow them year round so you see these ones were transplanted uh late uh late april early may and all all summer long we picked on them and they're still going and so these kind of are the new successions these will pick because they're big these will grow under low light conditions, they'll do super well and we'll have them all summer long also. So celery is really interesting, the fact that they can be, they can occupy the bed space for a long time. And obviously when they're done, we harvest a few, uh, a few leaves, a few uh, branches on the plant every week. And that's how we all were able to come and pick all, all in all again. Salad mix, um, salad mix, you know, I think I'm, I'm done growing salad mix in that way. I, I prefer heads and I think they're just, they're, they're more when, you know, you see when, when the kitchen crew comes and harvests, they don't often, they sometimes not do, a, they often, they sometimes don't have a perfect way of cutting them. So they came in last week and they did a cut and you see that the second cut is not exactly uh, on par. So I think I'm going to be growing only heads in the near future. Just like bigger heads, mature heads. I'm going to move away from salad mix in that way. I've, I've been thinking about this for many, many years uh, and I kind of always refer back to it because it's super easy to seed, but I prefer to have uh, mini heads of salads, like kind of the Salanova style. It just gives more volume and it just gives more quality. So, but you know, again, it's, it's funny how year after year you can make, you know these things, sometimes you make some mistakes and then you repeat them. This is a classic, this is Mizuna, uh, purple Mizuna. This one is a workhorse for sure. This one grows really well all winter long. It's really beautiful with the color purple. And this one you can really cut. And the, the second growth is never, it's, it's always nice because even if the leaves are cut a little bit, like it doesn't really matter because it's already kind of super clunky in its shape. Uh, this one is definitely 
uh, you know, not just a favorite, but an important uh, stale horse in our mix. This one also in the mustard family, this is Ms. America. This is a new cultivar also that we tested last year. Uh, exceptionally, you know, purplish. It's really dark. It, it's a really nice leaf. You see how it's really, really filled. Um, so yeah, this one I really like also. I like the color and the shape. And this one also is super reliable, very frost hardy. So, Mash is uh, a favorite of a lot of our French uh, clients here. Um, it has a very unique taste. If you've never eaten Mash, uh, you should try it. Mash is the most frost hardy crop that we can grow. It grow green and it grows under low light condition and people like it when it's smaller so it's not the most uh if you know bountiful crop because you know you don't get that much yield per square foot but because we have people here that really really like it and it dresses the plate really nice uh, we grow a few beds and this is going to grow all winter long so this one is interesting mush is again but it's definitely not a money maker because it doesn't offer a lot of good yield per square meter or square square foot Jose the Sorel yeah. Sorel definitely one of my favorite uh, red vein Sorel is really unique uh, really pretty, really also frost hardy. This is one of the hardiest. You see how all the veins, it's a really, really nice vegetable. It's a really nice green. And, uh, you know, you can, you can sell it at the baby stage. It makes a really nice add on to any salad mix. Uh, but you also can keep some bigger leaves, you know, depending on what you want to offer. But here at the restaurant, these, these bigger leaves also can top dress some plates. We can do some arrangements. Uh, people eat them in salads, even if they're bigger. It has like a sour, acidic taste, uh, really strong in the summer, like too strong in my opinion, but in the winter, again, man, the cold just is, a, is an amazing cleanser of all these tastes and an enhancer. So it's, it's much milder. And again, the cold brings out the green, the, the red so really epic um, this is a really really interesting crop this is a test that we did this is another uh, it's, it's in the Chinese cabbage family um, Catherine who's the co-author of, uh, of our book she's really excited about these Asian greens and she she recommended I grow it here but I'm not gonna grow it again um, it just doesn't offer, you know, I don't like when the leaves become too kind of yellowish, light colors. I think the winter is there to express the fact that the greens will really become, you know, bright and hardy. And, and um, so, yeah, this one, I would not do it again. I don't even remember what the cultivar is. Uh, but, you know, Chinese celeries, uh, Chinese cabbages, I think they're better in the root cellar all in all. But again, like this for me is an experimental farm, so I'm happy to do these tests and these trials. If we go to Claytonia, that's definitely one that I like. And Claytonia, um, for me, is a great substitute to mosh because like mosh, it grows really, really well uh, in the winter. Like you can cut it, it's gonna regrow. You can just leave it even in December, January it just it just keeps growing and so these are super nice lobi leaves i like them they're great in salad mix and they it's going to grow bigger and and wider this should have been perhaps started just a few weeks earlier 
if I wanted to have more size at this time of the year. But I'm not worried because this one is going to keep on uh, generating, you know, growth throughout the winter. So this is another of our workhorse, uh, Claytonia, definitely um, one that I really, really like. And per square foot, it gives more yield than mosh. Parsley, Italian parsley. Uh, this one, again, grows really, really well in low light conditions and in the winter. So you see, and it has such a strong odor and smell. So this one I really like. And if you cater to, you know, more sophisticated restaurant, and they're really going for the taste, um, you can make a lot of money with this one. Um, you know, people eat uh, parsley, parsley, persil. Just like if it was nothing, but it's actually, it has a lot of flavor. You don't need a lot to cook with. So smaller bunches, uh, but this one grows really, really well throughout the winter. Definitely one of our favorite. And uh, yeah, spacing, pretty simple. This is uh, three, three rows, uh, six inch on the rows. And what we want is have bouquets that we're gonna harvest a few leaves from. We'll harvest the outside and then we'll let the heart grows again. And uh, that's how we go about it. Again, Bekana is uh, another one. We talked about it earlier. This one is uh, a cultivar that is comes highly recommended by Catherine. And I did a few beds. You know, we're going to do something nice with them, but I'm not enamored. Semposai, though, I like better because it has these dark uh, leafy greens. You see all these, these uh, Asian greens, they're really well adapted to low light and cold conditions. And what we'll do with these ones is, you know, we'll, we'll do wraps in the kitchen. And so these one, you know, see they have a really nice stem. It's like really crunchy, really nice, um, but gives a lot of yield. If you have a client, if you have, you know, a demand for a, a cabbage like this, it's interesting because it's, 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 it's the one that grew the most. Of all the greens that we planted around that date, that's the one that, have, that has the biggest mass of all. Okay, chard, bright lights, really interesting. This one is a, one of my favorite, uh, just a few beds here. But this one, really hardy, and we always grow it with uh, the uh, fork hood. And this one grows better. And what we'll do is we'll take a bouquet and we'll have a few of these inside when we go to market. And we'll have these on the outside, we'll mix. But, you know, Swiss chard, just like kale, really epic. Uh, these will grow all winter long, They're, we just started with them. And they're going to be, you know, they're going to be supplying the restaurant for the rest of winter. For the rest, they're going to su be supplying the restaurant for the west, the rest of the winter. Just like kale, these baby kales that we planted a few weeks ago, already harvested uh, on them every week. So, you know, they're going to be there for six, seven months. And you know, again, it's it's really epic to have this space uh, to do not so much research and trials anymore because we did that FQT farm for all these years, but just just to work with the chef and to see what he likes, what he cares about, you know, because we're we're uh, what we're doing is supplying the the old mill year round for the kitchen with these greens, and obviously I'm excited also because every week I tour. Uh, the greenhouse with the clients that come for the Saturday night uh, dinner and then I, we talk about food sovereignty, we talk about this idea of using less energy to grow in the winter and, and you know in comparison to tomatoes and, and strawberries and all the high techs, high tech greenhouses that are being built now. Uh, you know we're, we're you know opposing that by offering a solution which is low tech, we're working with the biology growing you know greens in the winter is much 
makes so much more sense in my opinion uh, than growing tomatoes. So it's exciting. If you want to learn more about what we do in our winter greenhouses, you can check out this video. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are doing well. I'm well. I'll see you next time.